Hi, I'm Betsy Barbu, and this is CAM Matters. Come join us today as we uh, do one of our favorite sessions, and that is questions and answers from you. So come join us, and I'll answer a few of your questions. Welcome to CAM Matters, condos, co-ops, HOAs, and beyond. Betsy Barbu is an informational leader in Florida on community association living, rights, and obligations. She is an expert on the rights and obligations of owners as well as the association. If you live or are planning to live in the state of Florida, there's a good chance you'll be part of a community association. And by the end of this show, you'll know a little bit more about community associations and why they matter. And welcome to the show. I'm Suzanne Lynn with Betsy Barbu. She's the important one because she's got all the answers. Today is all questions and answers, and I'm all the questions and she's all the answers. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So um, I do have some questions that you've actually officially been asked. Mm -hmm. I'd like to start out with one for myself, though. Oh, no. Okay. It's either about a flag or a pet. pet or an ostrich <laughs> or, going on an airplane. Or as a miniature a, horse. Right, yes. <laughs> no, actually, we're going to start off with co-ops. Okay. Um, so I have had conversations with a girlfriend, and she was talking about a co-op. And um, I was confused because I think that I... Well, it's in your title, so it's got yes. to be part of the yes. game. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, just talk to me. What what is specifies being a co-op? And tell, talk to me about that. Cooperatives in Florida, there actually are two kinds. One is an agricultural co-op, which okay. my dad used to manage a lot of oranges. those. Oranges. Oranges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're not talking about those. Okay. We're not talking about an agricultural co-op. We are talking about a residential co-op. And in Florida... The way the law is written, it's written as if it's a building and as if it was started as a co-op from scratch and built from the ground up. Everyone living in the building is not necessarily an owner, and there could be renters. Okay. But the building is owned collectively by the owners of each unit, and those owners are called shareholders. In Florida, though, most of our co-ops are mobile home parks that have been converted from a rental park to okay. the mobile home owners who own their lot. They were renting, they own their home, but they were renting the lot. Okay. And now they have bought the whole tract of land. But as you can imagine, let's say you've got 200 homeowner renters in a park. Right. Not everyone will have the means to buy a share okay. of that corporation. So the law allows for some of the residents in the community to still stay renters and for some of them to be owners, which we now call shareholders. Okay. And they get uh, very little attention in the state of Florida mm -hmm. as far as trade shows, educational classes. It's confusing to me just and, as well, uh, being on the outside. And, yeah. and it is confusing. And I had students in class for two days last week and still they were confused as to what it is. So, <laughs> that makes me feel better. So you, okay. you have to just kind of live it for a while to understand it. But contrary to popular belief, there are thousands of them in the state of Florida. Okay. But I have heard people who ought to know better who say there aren't any. Um, there, I believe. So HOAs, are condos, condos, and co-ops. And co-ops. Okay. Mm -hmm. And remember the three pieces of the three. sets of paper that I used to weigh. That's that right. That's right. Yeah. There are there are community associations and that are co-ops, and I'll t you want me to tell you a story about that. Tell me a story. Well, I was hired on a consultant basis back in November. Mm -hmm. Their co-op boards sometimes are like condominium and homeowner association boards and that there is a board member who won't play nicely in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. And and even with a lot of pressure, they won't quit. Okay. There is a process for the owners, and in a co-op, we call them shareholders, mm -hmm. there's a process for the shareholders to vote to remove them. Okay. It, it doesn't go real well. Mm -hmm. It's not very happy mm -hmm. situation. No, I imagine. But uh, They're I was, going down fighting. Uh, yes, yeah. and, but I was asked to um, help with that as far as counting some things. And then there's a peculiar type of board meeting that follows this uh, written mm -hmm. vote by the shareholders. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to chair that, and I did. And there was a, um, a lot of tension mm -hmm. in that meeting. It went as bad as you thought. Well, the meeting went okay, but the night before there had been an assault. And the okay. bigger board member knocked down the little board member. The deputy sheriff was called, and so we had an incident report. So we were expecting 
more trouble. Mm -hmm. About a month later then, they, all, they continued to hire me <laughs> to come and chair their annual meeting. And there was a flurry of emails two days before of all these things that were going to happen at the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you didn't feel a headache coming on no, or a, st a no, stomach ache? No, no, And you couldn't no, find an excuse? No, and, no. Okay. And, and, it, and because I took Chelsea with me. <laughs> and you all met Chelsea in one of our previous yes, shows. Yes, yes. And Chelsea had two jobs. Okay. Take the minutes of the meeting. Right. And be ready to dial 911. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad she's still in so, Did she have to? Uh, no. Oh, good. No. Okay. No. Okay. no, she didn't have to do any of that. She took them in. Okay, good. No, um, no incidents whatsoever. Good. Everybody behaved. Good. And we were very, very grateful. Wow. But we had prayer circles around the, yeah. the community sure. the night before. Yeah. So. It's tense. Mm -hmm. Emotions run high. They do. And whether it's a condo or a cooperative or a homeowner association, the emotions run high. They honestly do. So, yeah, this is the recall. This is recall. Yes, mm -hmm. everything. Recall. That's co ops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got another question yes, for me? Yes, we do. You know what? I'm going to need a break after that one because I need to comprehend. I mean, we're talking about adults, and it's just, it's really sad that you're having to come in and handle things that you're putting your yourself in, you know, bodily harm. <laughs> so managers face bullying, harassment, and a hostile work environment every day. So sign up for a class if you want to be a manager. <laughs> we'll give you the information. Hang on, we're gonna take a break and be right back. <laughs> Are you ready for a new career? Do you have skills or interest in management, real estate, Construction, maintenance, accounting, strategic planning, project management, budgets, human resource management, lawn and landscaping, pool services, or any other expertise needed to operate a community association? If you do, community association management could be for you. For more information, feel free to email Betsy at betsy at floridacamschools.com or visit the Florida Cam Schools website at www.floridacamschools.com. Florida Community Association Management continues to grow. Career opportunities abound. Okay, so welcome back to the show. And as we were departing, I made a joke about, <laughs> um, you know, being managers. And the, the truth is it's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't have managers that were... Uh, Dedicated. Very, dedicated and very highly trained. Dedicated. The, and the truth is, I mean, they do run into situations yes, like that. Yes, so I do yes. really want to encourage you to. There are to a lot of satisfied that. managers that yeah. work very, very well with their boards. Yeah. And there are a lot of boards that truly appreciate their managers. Mm -hmm. But there's that 5%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Next question is about mail in voting. <laughs> And you no, know. <laughs> sign of the times. Yes, it is. Okay, so the question came in from Jackie. Uh, the statute prohibits voting by email, section 718.112, no, Board of Administration Meetings. Talk to me okay, about that. Okay, uh, what she's asking is um, can the board vote by email, is what she's asking. And the answer is no. You know, the board cannot vote by email. The statutes for condominium, cooperative, and homeowner association mm -hmm. all say that the boards may communicate by email. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to assume that also means telephone and text. Okay. They can communicate by email, but they may not vote. And that is because we have in Florida what is loosely called the open meeting statutes. Okay. That says any decisions that the board makes has to be made in the open with the owners and shareholders having an opportunity to attend and hear mm. that discussion. That makes a lot of sense. Which is not the, quite the same as the governance under the Florida Sunshine Law. Okay. The governance under the Florida Sunshine Law applies to elected and appointed officials. Mm -hmm. And I was actually under that. Uh, Sunshine Law, when I was appointed by Governor Scott in 2013 to be on the manager, the CAM Regulatory Council at the state level. And I couldn't talk to one other council member in any form. Okay, so explain the difference again. The one the, is for vulnerability and openness to the, the board. The, uh, uh, in the statutes for homeowner associations, uh, cooperatives, and condos is to make sure that the boards are fully transparent 
in their decision making, mm -hmm. and that the owners have the ability, if they wish, mm -hmm. to come and hear okay. the discussion of the board before they make the decisions that could affect the value of their assets. Right, right, absolutely. So, okay. because of that, they may talk by email. Okay. But they can't vote by email. Okay. And then the Sunshine... Now, the Sunshine Law is, is for elected and appointed officials. Okay. Like your We're county commissioner, right. city commissioners, and that's not us. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so we are talking um, a question from John that says, um, I recall you saying that cable providers are to give a community channel with their contracts for large accounts, but I don't see anything in the chapter 718, 719 that say that. Can you clear that up for me? John remembered almost correctly. Okay. In our pre-licensing class, we did talk about cable contracts and that there is often um, money left on the table mm -hmm. by community associations that allow cable companies to use uh, their land. To, okay. to run uh, oh, sure. cable and things through mm -hmm. their land. And when they provide services for their residents, there's there's often some money left on the table. Okay. So they can make money sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that happens is when you actually, the board of directors uh, purchases cable for the community, they often give you, you a community channel, but they're not required to. Oh, okay. And John misunderstood oh, okay. that part. But they often give you a community channel to but put that's your how news it on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but that's but um, John was just mistaken. Okay. It's not required to be I given gotcha. to them. It just usually is in that package. I gotcha. Let's talk um, about William's question. Um, are HOAs in Florida required to have a website? That's a great question. That's that a good question. That would make sense, yes. wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it would. The condominium law was changed and went into effect in 2019, January 1st, 2019, that requires condominiums to have a website. It does not require cooperatives or homeowner associations oh to have a website. <laughs> okay. What the condominium law is always the first. Okay. To get the law. Okay. Uh, they have more people. Okay. They, they lead more, the way. They have more money. Mm -hmm. They have the ear of the legislators, the okay. lobbyists, the attorneys. They have the ear. So the law starts there and eventually migrates mm -hmm. into condominium or cooperative law and homeowner, homeowner association law. But they are required to have a website. They're required to have their official documents mm -hmm. on the website, and those that was that big stack of papers mm -hmm. I used to wave mm -hmm. at you, which would be the Declaration of Condominium, the Articles of Incorporation, the bylaws, rules and regulations, their minutes, okay. and periodically as, the, as they have meetings and things, their financials from the budget meeting would mm -hmm. be on there, their year-end financials, their... Uh, minutes, mm -hmm. those kinds of things would be on there. Some of the, uh, a list of the primary contracts okay. are on there. So they have a lot of information that's through a dedicated uh, resident portal. So it's not open to the public, okay. but it's just open to the residents. That'd be very helpful mm -hmm. if people actually look at it before they purchase. Oh, you think? Right? Yeah. To see the sure strength would. and the health of the finances of yes. that place. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And it's only because you've taught me about that as, as my son was purchasing a condo we knew to ask what is the health of the finances of, mm -hmm. you know. You know, and that's that's very interesting because I think in seven years I've had two people, uh, mm -hmm. potential purchasers, mm -hmm. ask me about the reserves and mm -hmm. the financials. Mm -hmm. is, it a, is it a good community? Is it viable? Mm -hmm. Do they have money? Mm -hmm. Are they in debt? Are they, mm -hmm. are they in any lawsuits? Mm -hmm. See, that's the question you need to ask before you move in. Mm -hmm. is, this, is the association involved in a lawsuit? Mm -hmm. Because if they lose... You're responsible. Each owner pays their share wow. of the attorney's fees and any punitive damages wow. that could be awarded. So that And they be, don't tell you that, right? <laughs> no. In, in condominium law, it's supposed to be disclosed. Right. I don't know if very many people know that that's supposed to be disclosed, mm. but because I teach it every week, <laughs> I know it's supposed to be disclosed. <laughs> Betsy, you just are the queen of knowing <laughs> this stuff. This is so important, and, you know... Before you purchase, if you're coming to Florida, you're thinking about being in a community, uh, you know, living area, you need to check out these videos because it is just mm -hmm. a wealth of knowledge. I mean, and now we also have our Cam Matters Facebook group. 
That's right. Let's talk so, about that. So mm -hmm. there are questions that can be posed there. And not only can you get answers from me, but from our community. Absolutely. It's a private group, yeah. so not just everybody can join. That's right. And we post things periodically on it that we think is good information. Once you get past the hazing, <laughs> you are in and... We interrogate you before we let you in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worth it, trust me, once you get through it. No, it's great, and it is awesome the way that other members have watched the videos and they've mm -hmm. been through Betsy's classes so they know some of the answers and what they're trying to do is is take some of the phone calls off of Betsy's that she's <laughs> answered 20 times that week already so so well that was a great session thank you so much I'm glad we we really answered a lot of questions about co-ops and um, not that I don't have more questions, but we are out of time. And you're like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so, no. Thanks. Join us again for the next episode and have a great day. Thank you for listening to CAM Matters. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. For more information, feel free to email Betsy at Betsy at FloridaCamSchools.com or visit the Florida CAM Schools website at www.FloridaCamSchools.com information provided on this show is general in nature and does not constitute legal advice. Please contact a licensed attorney for your specific situation.